Okay class, so this is the problem that we were looking at in class today uh, and that I figured most of us were struggling with. So I wanted to, to talk about it um, through this video and then also you know, talk about the strategies involved with solving a problem like this. So here we're asked to form, to turn one methyl cyclohexanol into one bromo two methyl cyclohexane. Um, and I'm shown, I've shown those, those two products here. <clears throat> and really the strategy that we need to, to be thinking about here is, you know, how do I go from, from this starting material to this product? But another way to think about it is, well, how do I know to make this product? How do I know how to, to get to this brominated product? And in my mind, you know, we, we talked about in class today, forming the anti-Markovnikov product of addition, HBr, um, from an alkene. So here we've got the anti-Markovnikov addition product. And we do that by doing a radical addition of HBr. So this really illustrates the, the necessity, basically, that you need to have all of these reactions that we've talked about sort of in your back pocket, ready to, to utilize. Um, if you don't know the reactions really, really well, then you're really gonna struggle on something like this and it's gonna be, a, you know, it's gonna be a pain. So looking at this, I can say, well, if I can make this alkene, I know that I can add HBr, you know, under these radical conditions to form my final product. So then the question becomes, well, how do I make this alkene from this alcohol. So again, you know, we've talked about making alkenes in class uh, today and, and probably previously, and this is just a simple dehydration reaction. So I know that if I start with this alcohol, I can do a dehydration, eliminate water, that will lead me to this alkene. From this alkene, I can then do an anti-Markovnikov addition to end up with my final product. So this is sort of my, my plan of action. These arrows here, these are what we would call our retrosynthetic arrows, basically just sort of working backwards. And I would really encourage you guys to practice this as you're, as you're getting started in this class. So now all that really remains is to write out the different steps. So step one, dehydration to alkene. And we're gonna do that with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and a little bit of heat. And that's gonna get us to this alkene product. I would definitely encourage you to write out the mechanism for this. I'm gonna skip that in this video. Um, if you look at the previous videos, I show you know, basically the same exact reaction mechanism, but definitely practice writing out this mechanism to make sure you're, you're on board with that. And then step two is gonna be anti Markovnikov addition. And so for that, we're gonna use HBr and some radical initiators. So here I'm just writing ROOR, a peroxide, a, a generic peroxide, and that's, that's sufficient, I would say. Um, under these conditions, we can, we can say that, that this will lead us to our desired anti-Markovnikov product. So for the mechanism, I'm gonna show you the mechanism for this one, because I think that this is something that we do need to practice, and I would definitely encourage you maybe to pause the video, try to write out this mechanism, and then, and then watch the video again to make sure that you're doing it right. Or just ignore that and just watch it. Either way is fine. So the way I'm gonna draw this, so these two arrows that I've first drawn, those indicate Right, only one electron is moving, so the one electron from the, the Br radical is gonna be forming a new carbon-bromine bond at this space here. And then the other electron from this double bond is gonna end up forming a, a radical here at the more substituted carbon, right? And we're gonna put that at the more substituted carbon because that's gonna be a more stable intermediate. And that's always gonna be sort of what we're looking for is the more stable intermediate. So this is my more stable intermediate with the um, radical on the more substituted carbon. I've got the bromine down here. Um, then we're gonna add another equivalent of HBr. And the way that I'm gonna draw that is again with these half arrows coming together. So this represents one electron from the carbon, 
one electron from the hydrogen bromine bond, forming a new carbon hydrogen bond. And then this last electron, because we, we have to deal with that essentially, is going to be um, reforming the bromine radical. So this will lead us back to our final product plus Br radical, which can then sort of go on and, and continue the reaction, um, you know, again. All right.